The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. And today we're going to be talking about acutonics, which is a a, a system that was co-developed by Donna Carey and has evolved over the past 17 years through the combined efforts of Donna and Dr. Ellen Franklin. It is a modality that makes the basic principles of oriental medicine accessible in a non-invasive way and provides an adjunct therapy that integrates beautifully into clinical practice. Acutonics is a healing modality using tuning forks or sound vibration and healing. We're here today with both Dr. Ellen Franklin and Donna. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be here. (laughs) So I guess um, the first thing is how how did you get started on something um, that's so different? Well, I have to say as an an acupuncturist for, you know, about 20 years, when I was in clinical practice, I was looking for alternatives to needles um, because a lot of people couldn't tolerate them, children, Um, people with low immune functions. I worked a lot in environmental medicine and more fragile people, and they couldn't tolerate the needles. So I was looking for an alternative um, so that they could take advantage of the wealth and the the beauty and cosmology of oriental medicine um, that's been around for 5,000 years. But... um, they couldn't tolerate needles, and it was also about um, the ecology of things, just all of the needles, all of the wrapping, and I thought, wow, if we could do this vibrationally and non-invasively, um, that would be awesome. And that's really how it started in my clinical practice in Madison, Wisconsin, many, many years ago. And then as I was the um, clinical dean at the NIOM or the Northwest Institute of um, Oriental Medicine, we integrated it into many, many clinics, and we found it really got its its launch over there, and um, we found that it could be integrated with needles, without needles, and it was just a, a great therapy and it promoted Oriental, the practice of Oriental and integrative medicine um, into the into the models. So, can you describe exactly what the acutonic system is? It's, sure, um, this is Ellen. So, acutonics essentially is rooted in Oriental medicine, the basic principles of Oriental medicine, which applies either needles or, in our case, sound vibration directly to acupuncture points or over acupuncture points or along the meridians. And it's rooted in oriental medicine, psychology, and principles of sound. So it's a non-invasive approach to health and well-being that really incorporates the use of precision calibrated tuning forks in place of or in conjunction with needles. So um, how did you find these specific frequencies that you're using? Well, the, everything is based on oriental medicine, and in oriental medicine, um, it's all about interconnection and our life and our evolution with nature. And these are based on the rotational frequencies or the rotational 
velocities of the planets around the sun, which was originally calculated by Johannes Kepler um, in his um, angular momentums, his planetary velocities, and then it was um, transcribed into uh, frequencies or hertz through um, exhaustive uh, formulas by a mathematician and physicist, uh, uh, Hans Cousteau, um, last century. And so these are actually based on these planetary, the rotation of the planets around the sun. And then our institute went on to um, create new planetary frequencies that um, beyond Kepler, because obviously, you know, we didn't have planets or, you know, hybrids like Chiron or Nibiru or the new planetary discoveries like uh, Sedna. And so they, those came from our own calculations and the, the idea of new physics in healing, which wasn't necessarily based on the same laws because now we're out of our solar system with some of these things and we have... Um, interplanetary wanderers and and whatnot. So we can't use a static model, um, you know, for for the new frequencies. And so then we develop these new frequencies. And we've been working with them. We, of course, before we even, you know, um, put something out to the public or put it in our classes, we've already worked with it clinically for about five or more years to see the efficacy and see how the frequency affects human physiology. So, I mean, if we just go back a little bit, I know a lot of people are probably going, why are you using these planet frequencies? Um, what are you actually seeing and that those are doing? How did that actually come about, that that would be something you'd want to work with? Well, that's a great question, and I, I mean, I think we're now crossing into, um, I mean, we're going cross-cultural because now we're in the, we're in the um, venue of mythology, um, frequency, archetypes. archetypes, and we are into something um, with myths, gods, goddesses that have been in the human psyche for millennia and millennia. Yeah, and think- so th- this is what imprints in our neural networks, and we relate to these. I mean, whether it was the ancients or we're always living out um, God's genes and consciousness. I think another point, you know, when you look at why we came to work with planetary frequencies can really be traced back to oriental medicine, you know, and, and to Lao Tzu and to the whole concept of, how, of the macrocosm and the microcosm, which goes back to ancient times and the way in which, you know, man or woman is viewed as a representation of the heavens. And so this idea, as above, so below, as within, so without, heaven, earth, and I are one. And so the the whole concept of human physiology and the human psyche being influenced by these planetary um, bodies and these this whole zeitgeist that is embedded cross culturally, as Donna was saying, with within our understanding of how a planet actually re- behaves physically. So one example might, that's really embedded within you know within within this would be the moon. So the moon, the full moon. Just think about the full moon for for just a second. In our system, would be perceived as very very yin, very nourishing, and. and- in- I would say in physiology, and this goes way back, and I'm not just talking to modern medicine, but, I mean, we know that the moon influences tides and rhythms in our body. So, so for instance, where would we use the moon? When our rhythms are off, arrhythmic heart rhythms, right? Dysmenorrhea. Um, anywhere where, whether it was our peristaltic rhythm, anywhere where we're 
off, our rhythms are off, or where we need that um, that watery energy. But I want to just go back to um, the frequencies and why are we so affected by these planets. I mean, there's been so much research, and we have to go back to realize that um, Eastern medicine or Oriental medicine go is about correspondences, whether it's five elements, and we go back to, you know, the inception points of of this, or in Western medicine, it is about correspondences. Every planet had a corresponding metal. It had a, it had a cell salt. It had which formed the basis of where anything from homeopathy to some of our earliest forms of medicine and how people were treated. So I would like to get back to that whole idea of correspondences and um, likes and resonance because that's really, in the end, um, what it's all about. Why, do, why does this affect us? Well, in nature, we know what the moon does. We know what the sun does. It gives us, us light. It gives us radiance. It, it's in charge of our circulatory system. It's in charge of our heart. I mean, the modern science is there. More, we have more cardiac arrests and times of solar flares. Whether we can see the sun, there's more mining accidents that happen during solar flares when people are underground and so on and so, so forth. Anything from hemoglobin, um, flocculation studies, I mean, all of this. Is, these planets have always been a huge part of, of us. And, you know, in Oriental medicine, I would just say, you know, yin and yang. Well, in the planets, we have Mars and Venus. They're, you know, complementary. I mean, Mars is going to be inflammatory, right? It's going to be um, just push us and drive our will and and rule the head where Venus is going to rule the heart and the parasympathetic system and it's an anti-inflammatory and we can even see this playing out in in modern medicine where Mars the the associated metal is iron well men have more iron in their blood than women and women uh, the associated metal for Venus is copper we have women have more copper in their blood than men, and what do we do for anti-inflammation from way back? We wear copper bracelets, you know. So these things are so deep in our psyche and ourselves that, and they also have their own personalities and they have their own their their entities with their own morphologies. And as we, you know, do planetary more and more planetary exploration, we're going to this is, we'll see this. I mean, I don't think we're, I mean, we're living in a time of space exploration and where we actually know these things where before it had to be maybe more intuitive and now we have the science to back it up. So, um, I mean, you're using the planet frequencies, uh, but what exactly are these frequencies doing? Like, how, how does that affect people in a different way, I guess, than the acupuncture or, or that kind of thing? Well, I think we're still accessing the human body. You know, the, bo- the human body is at least 70% water. Sound travels four times faster in water than in air. And so the sound gets in and impacts the body physiologically um, very deeply and very quickly. And what we hear from, from patients is that they feel the impact of the sound vibrations often, you know, weeks later. You know, they'll feel the beneficial impact and they'll stay with them longer. And, you know, we're, we're deeply affected by sounds in our environment. And, and so when you combine the use of sound frequency with the acupuncture points in the meridians, you're able to access at a very deep level. So one example that I would use is we work with OM, which is the frequency of the Earth traveling around the sun through the four seasons in a 365-day orbit. And this frequency has a really deep grounding quality when it's applied to the body. 
and it will help us to shift people toward a centeredness, toward a feeling of peace and serenity. One of the stories that I was recently told by one of our practitioners who was doing um, work in um, Guatemala was that he, she brought the Om Forks, and they were there doing a training of, of really traumatized people who've had a very and teaching them basic principles of oriental medicine. And she said, just when people held the Om Forks to their ears, it was as though their whole being shifted. You could see them visibly take a breath, relax, and become just just very very peaceful in an environment that was not the least bit peaceful. And I, I'd like to just add to, you know, I think what you're really delving at with this question is how does that frequency work different from, say, a needle? And remember, we're using the same points. And for us, we go back to the deeper aspects and in some ways the mysteries and cosmologies of oriental medicine that are more rooted in Taoist philosophies and cosmologies. So <clears throat> we're very big on point names, you know, inner gate, inner path, original child, right, gushing spring. When you sound something out, you give it, you call it forward, you know. So rather than saying it's a, a linear where, you know, d- d- Oriental medicine is getting so westernized. You know, everything is linear. Li3, Li4, Li5, Li6, stomach 25. Instead of celestial pivot, instead of upper star, instead of, you know, abundant splendor. And so what we do, even by having the poetry of the points come into you know, a a deeper practice that is more um, of an art that then when we apply musical intervals, because we are always using two tuning forks, so the intervals um, create, it's a space in between. So if you're putting a fifth, which is an invitation and an opening, versus something that's going to create dissonance and push push or build energy like what we would like when we're doing post-cancer therapies versus when we're trying to open up a breathing apparatus in the body or create homeostasis. Um, It's a very different animal. So, I mean, we have many levels of things going on. We have music theory. We have um, psychology. psychology. (laughs) We have oriental medicine. We have music, we have the arts, we are, in a sense, we're getting back to to the art of healing. We're not, okay. you know, doing paint by number anything. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to go into this way more when we get back, because we're, um, you know, it's starting to get really deep into what you guys are doing and why you're bringing this all together. So if you have any questions about this show, you can call in or send us an email at anantacalgary at gmail.com or message us on Facebook or Twitter, and we'd love to hear your comments. We'll be back shortly with Dr. Ellen Franklin and Donna, who are the co-creators of Acutonics. Now you don't have to stay linked to your desktop or laptop. Take Voice America on the go and listen anywhere. Get our mobile app for iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android at the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market. We all want to live a healthy, vibrant life. With so many toxins in our world, it becomes an uphill battle. Inflammation is the premise of all disease and comes from four sources of toxins. With a proper understanding of toxins as well as proper detoxification and nutrition, disease can be avoided. Tune in to Whole Healthy Living with Sharon Brennan and learn how you can live a clean, whole, and healthy life in a toxic world. Start your journey Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Time on Voice America Health & Wellness. What causes us to be sick? We're not talking about the actual illness or the scientific cause of illnesses. We're talking about your body and health. Listen for the healing whisper of return to peace. 
Each week, host Dr. Marianne Chase shows you how to listen to your heart to identify poor health, stress, and disease. You'll learn how to heal energetically and spiritually, as well as physically. It's time to depend less on the drugs and more on the heart. The Healing Whisper airs live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific, on Voice America Health & Wellness. Get the news on our shows and other happenings by following us on Twitter. Find us at VoiceAmericaTRN or Twitter.com forward slash VoiceAmericaTRN. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. And today we're speaking with the um, co-developers of Acutonics, which is a system using oriental medicine, so acupuncture theory and tuning forks. It's called Acutonics. Uh, We're talking with Donna Carey and Dr. Ellen Franklin. So before the break, we were talking about um, what exactly you're doing with the tuning forks. and, And you touched on acupuncture, which we haven't talked a lot about on this show. So can you just explain maybe just what some of your favorite points are to use and and how you see that change for people? Well, I would say some of my favorite points are going to be the four gates, which, you know, most people that study acupuncture don't really know the, the cosmology behind those, but those are the four gates of heaven. Um, and it goes back to deep mythologies and in Taoism about holding up the sky and circulating things through the system. And um, I love to just create opening and flow through the body to get it to a place where it can actually um, just accept um, being a place of peace and and for the mind to get out of the way um, you know, obviously, and so healing can happen, um, or at least whatever people are gleaning from a session, why did they come to see you? It's, you know, it's not always about symptom relief. It's about, you know, consciousness and, and many other things. But I love the four gates, and of course we are, we have done a lot of work and development on the extraordinary vessels, which are the embryonic vessels. So taking people back, in a sense, to the embryonic piece of themselves, which is before everything was split off, and taking them back to Wu Chi and moving out from there. So we try to work all of that a lot. Obviously, I mean, um, we like the entry-exit, the lung one, liver 14 for, you know, our central, you know, it, it's, it just creates the big flow in life and it helps us take a deep breath and release things. And, you know, that's the gate of hope. And so um, for me, I mean, we can't, in this age and this time of fear and pessimism, and we just need to give people hope and joy And I feel that we have to just help them find that and then support the kidney to help them build energy and and turn hope into courage. Well, yeah, we talk a lot about, um, you know, on my on my shows about the kidneys are related to fear and that there's way more of that going on in the world these days with mm-hmm. terrorism and, you know, we're all afraid of our food and we're afraid of our air and we're afraid to go outside and we're afraid to be inside because our inside of our house can be toxic. And, yeah. and um, you know, it, it's nice to hear that there's a way you to find that release because we, you know, we talk about, oh, you just have to work on it. (laughs) And uh, um, it's, you know, (laughs) it sounds like, um, you know, quite beautiful that you can use these sounds to find that, that balance and that release that's so important for all of us. And for now, I mean, it's like, let's get expansive. (laughs) Let's not get contractive. 
and be smaller than what we were. Let's not, how, how much do we want to reach out to the universe? Because it's always going to be there accepting everything and expect, accepting our expansive views. I mean, we limit ourselves in our own prison, you know, whether it's our own houses and environments or whatever it is. It's like how small or how large do you want to make your universe? That's always the question um, for people, you know. So if we want it, your acutonic system, which I've studied the first four levels in it, it gets quite complicated. I mean, you've got all these planets and all these forks laid out, and we'd probably have to have, you know, 10 shows to talk about them all. But um, what is your favorite forks, frequencies? Uh, <laughs> well, they're all my favorites, but it's, it's like there are what's your favorite kid. But I yeah. have to say um, my favorite frequency would be the planet um, Nibiru um, that we developed, which is kind of, we call it, and the Sumerians wrote exhaustingly about it. It's the planet of the crossing, where things cross your lives, and you have to decide, you know, are you going to take the leap or not? Do you want to take that quantum leap? And, and so it's a different paradigm because um, Nibiru has come from another solar system, and I've always felt, I mean, that was where Bodhi said, you know, between Mars and, you know, Mars and Jupiter, I place a planet, and Kepler said that too, because it didn't follow the laws, something was missing, and so for me, it, it is like a missing link in our evolution and DNA, it's a place where we get stuck. And we get in our own way, and we can't take leaps. So I would say um, it came into our solar system for a reason, because it wanted to teach us something, but maybe it wanted to learn something from us. My second favorite planet, I would have to say, is Sedna, because it's... um, And for all of the Canadian listeners, I mean, Sedna was discovered in... Um, 2003, and Sedna obviously is the um, Inuit goddess of the north that guards the poles, and she's all about her discovery about tsunamis, about climate change, about how do we keep our spine straight of our planet and everything that's going out around us. We can't contaminate our earth. She guards the animals. She's a shaman, a reluctant shamanist. She goes through her healing, but um, she is the new earth. So I look at the sadhana frequency as the new earth. It's tough love. It's compassion with an edge. And sadhana doesn't let you get away with anything at all. I mean, you have to have respect for the planet, for the animals, for one another. And um, she doesn't let anybody off the hook. And so our old ideas about the big earth goddess with the big breasts, you know, and people sucking it dry, that's not how Sedna works. It's tough love. So I say that's why I love Sedna, and we have that frequency. Obviously, we combine it with some of the other planets, but Sedna is the new earth, and I see, you know, we've already, uh, many of us who are, have been working in light and sound for so many years and in the healing arts. Um, you know, we've already created, in a sense, um, an architecture for what we want to step into. What do we want that new earth to look like? What is the planet we want for our children and the future generations? So um, how... I mean, going from there, we can't talk about all the frequencies. So it's nice to just get an idea of of what's going on. And then, when you when you use these forks in clinic, what what changes do you see? Is there certain um, you know conditions or illnesses that they can work on? Or I mean, we talked about people feeling more grounded with the right. OM frequency, um, which is what the you know that OM does for us. But what else do you see happen? Well, I see it. it's this is integrative medicine, and so we see quantum leaps. I mean, we see things happen um, 
with sound and frequency that it would um, take a lot more time to see it happen with acupuncture needles because we're calling in um, different levels of consciousness here. But I would say anything that acupuncture is going to be treating, I mean, this is acutonics is going to be treating. And I think that we're way further along with things like spinal cord injuries and diabetic neuropathy, AIDS-related neuropathies, and things of that nature um, that we could be, you know, getting no results from. Um, So I would say anything from digestive problems to, you know, increasing awareness. And I know that Ellen has done so much work in the field of um, post-traumatic stress and compassion fatigue with healthcare practitioners um, that, you know, I'd like her to, to speak to that. And we, you know, pain, trauma, um, all of the stress-related symptoms that um, we see so, so much of clinically, from not sleeping to digestive issues to depression. severe pain to depression. Um, I did my doctoral dissertation on severe stress and compassion fatigue in nurses, and with a very simple protocol that nurses were taught to do on themselves, they reported absolutely profound results from their initial use of the tuning forks. And, you know, they talked about things like they would wake up scattered and and have everything pressing on them, and the forks would help to quiet everything and calm things, or it would address their pain. Or one woman talked about how she felt that someone had taken a hammer and, and shattered a mirror and all the pieces were there but they were all over the place and that the forks were, helped to bring the pieces back together. Someone else who had chronic pain to the point where she wasn't able to engage with her family, she'd come home from work and she'd be in so much pain and she said that, that from the moment she started using the forks, from the training, that she felt a shift in her pain, in her level of pain. and that at home her husband would ask her if she had used the forks because he would know if she had or if she hadn't. And it would, it, he could just tell by the way she was walking and how, how she was, um, moving that maybe she hadn't used them that day. So we're really seeing very profound results clinically. And, and the beauty of this work is that you can get in at a really deep level clinically as a clinician and with an understanding of the points and acupuncture and the qualities of the tools, you can affect major shifts for your parents, for your patients, for your clients. But you can also... Oh, sometimes your parents, too. But, but you can also, you know, you're working with a, with a parent, for example, who has children that, that with major problems, and, you know, you can actually teach them some basic protocols that they can use at home with their children. We have people using the tuning forks in in schools with elementary children, with learning disabilities, with ADHD. And so we're seeing just so many applications. And part of the beauty of this system is because it's not invasive, you're not puncturing the skin, you're essentially using sound on or over the points that people can learn to do it, and they can learn to do it clinically with a tremendous amount of depth in our, in our full certification program, or they can learn basic techniques that can provide relief for them at home. Um, so, so how do you, um, uh, just briefly, how do you get people set up to be able to do things at home? Do you teach them the acupuncture points or just basic ones? We, what I... What I did for my dissertation, which was a self-care protocol, is I I came up with a simple 10-point protocol that was designed for severe stress and that were all points that could easily be reached on the body. So I didn't include, like I might have, if if a practitioner were doing that protocol, I would probably include the eight extraordinary meridians and, and the, you know, the Chong vessel or some of the other points that are harder for someone to do on themselves. But on... On the body, physically, I selected points that were on the front of the body. Donna mentioned the four gates earlier, large intestine four and liver three, and the kidney one on the ball of the foot, the three treasures, which we work with a lot, which are 
REN4, REN17, and DO20. There's stomach 36, spleen 6. They're easy points to show to someone for them to self-treat. And we also have several um, sets of tuning forks that, you know, we, we don't, like other people, we're really not in this to... We're about education, not... Anybody can set up a website and sell tuning forks. Because we use ours for medical research, we um, make sure that we have the highest quality, which is a specific formula for us that has a very tight tolerance for frequency. And, you know, it's, it's not the same. All tuning forks are not the same. Well, and we manufacture in the United States, which helps us to control Everything. quality. <laughs> And so I, wa- I want to talk about that a little more when we get uh, back from a break. We're going to take a quick break right now. Um, we're talking today with um, Donna and Ellen, who are the co-founders of Acutonics, which is a, a system using tuning forks and sound vibration on acupuncture points. And uh, we're going to be back shortly. If you have any questions about the show, you can email at anantacalgary at gmail.com or you can message us on Facebook or Twitter. And we'd love to hear your comments. We'll be back shortly. Get the news on our shows and other happenings by following us on Twitter. Find us at VoiceAmericaTRN or Twitter.com forward slash VoiceAmericaTRN. Every day, you hear so much about different aspects of the health and wellness field. One day, you hear one thing, and the next day, you hear something that contradicts what you heard the day before. How do you know what's right? Try tuning in to The Cutting Edge of Health and Wellness today with Dr. Neil Nathan. Our goal is to educate and explore this field with guest experts in order to help you take control of your health and well-being. Listen Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Voice America Health & Wellness. When a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, it's probably the most frightening thing that's ever happened to her. Friends and family often don't know what to do for support, not to mention the patient herself. That's where Breast Friends Cancer Support Radio comes in. Join Becky Olson and Sharon Hennepin, breast cancer survivors and advocates. They help by providing inspiration, information, and most of all, hope. Tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Now you don't have to stay linked to your desktop or laptop. Take Voice America on the go and listen anywhere. Get our mobile app for iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android at the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. I'm here today with Dr. Ellen Franklin and Donna Carey, who are the co-founders of Acutonics, which is a system using sound vibrations and tuning forks on acupuncture points. So, um, Donna and Ellen, um, one thing that we didn't, uh, we haven't really, we just touched on a little bit, is the materials that you use on your forks, as well as you have some other things aside from tuning forks that you use. So you can talk about those a little bit. Sure. I mean, the materials, I, like I mentioned, are space-grade metals. Everything is made in the U.S. has very tight tolerance, and it's, it's a specific alchemy um, for us because we had known all along we were using the this for medical research, and so you can't have something that's even two, like two hertz off, because that's a different note oftentimes, and, you know, because your program is falling through the cracks, um, it's it's just about um, the difference that I wanted to to explain between uh, Western um, music theory and cosmic music theory. And in Western music, there an A is an A, 
it's a particular frequency. It's an A440. I mean, that's how they tune pianos. There's black and white keys. Our system is um, based on the rotations of the planets around the sun. In other words, it's not a system that was manufactured by um, man, which was basically the, the church that constrained everything into black and white keys, good and evil, dissonant intervals, this, the devil's interval. It's about how nature actually works, which is the difference between a patriarchal and a matriarchal system, which is why I think it dovetails so well with um, Oriental medicine, because it's about cooperation, it's about, you know, natural cycles and rhythms. So um, that being said, so it's a, about all these layers of things. The the forks we have them in three different. Um, we have a low vibration, a lower vibration, a, an octave, which works well with the physical physicality of the body. And we always start with the mid because that's where most people are. But oftentimes, when something is stuck in a field. And I want to just go back to spinal cord injuries or traumatic events where people pop out of their bodies and you can't even touch their body, you know, so you have to access it outside the body on a outside the point. So we would use high frequency versus middle versus low, which is what we might use for things like the low frequencies for sciatica and where we have to get deep into the muscles and tissues and and things like that. But um, we also have things like chimes, which we use in the field, but they're kind of a calling. You know, they help set a stage. For instance, I might open a session with a full moon chime. It's tubular. It sounds really beautiful. And it's saying, you are in a safe space. We are going to nurture you here. Whatever's going to unfold, it it just happens, you know. And so if somebody was depressed, I might use a sun chime to start a session. You know, um, something solar, if they were always cold. You know, so these are things, and we use the planetary gongs as well, but we're talking now about things that are 11th and 12th dimensional sound vibration. We can't even test these things. I mean, we know this is like... Uh, probably beyond string theory into membrane theory. And <clears throat> so that is a little bit more complex, but we can say we use things like bowls as well, which um, have uh, advanced harmonics that we might put under, a po uh, under um, a the table. body or even on an area. If somebody had some scar tissue and was working on with breast cancer, we might lay that on their chest because it's not like acupuncture or even the tuning forks. It covers an area, and the frequencies and harmonics go so deeply into the body. I think one of the beauties of, of the gongs and the chimes as well is we have a lot of people who do work with groups and do um, community community work, they do um, group therapy work, they do groups who've experienced trauma, and they'll use the gongs and the chimes in those settings, and you're able to do amazing work and lead really incredible deep meditation. So they're very, they're very powerful tools. Sound is an incredibly powerful tool that gets into the body on such a deep level, and you know, everything in the, vi in the world vibrates, everything in the universe vibrates, and you know, our life is governed by complex cycles and rhythms that interrelate and affect one another and and work in mutual support and resonance. So, you know, our heart beats and our lung regulates breath and our organs work in mutual support and resonance to each other. And so that when you're bringing in all of these sounds and the body in the most basic way in oriental medicine you talk about a body out of balance when yin and yang are not in right relationship or when chi is stagnant and the energy pathways of the body are unable to flow freely right that's the foundation of really of oriental medicine and so there's this basic understanding of of the human body that when you can break up these blockages and you can bring in 
sound vibration, you can help the body come to wholeness, come to wuxi. You're able to get between the cracks to the place where, you know... True healing. Where is the inception point of whatever it was. And so I think that allows something to flow in and to expand itself and to, you know... Um, at the cellular level, because we're talking about, like Ellen said, 70% water. And, you know, it's been, the science has showed us, I mean, yes, the, the acupuncture meridians are waterways, but we also have some of the modern research on acuporins, which tells us that, you know, the, every cell has its own network of meridians. So when we enliven something with a, a vibration, especially something that our body recognizes because it's part of the natural cycle um, and how we were born and all these planets are rotating constantly around us and we're seeing them rise and set. Well, I mean, that's a pretty powerful medicine. I mean, not just the, the physicality and the, the fields of... The, the physical fields and electromagnetics of planets, but then when we get into the psychology and the myth, the archetype and morphologies and all of that, I mean, we have um, a medicine of the future. We combine a 5,000-year-old medicine, which is Oriental medicine, Chinese medicine, and then we overlay it with something like this. We have something that's... Um, you know, like I said, it's a quantum, it's a quantum medicine. Well, and we're the other thing is that we're drawing from all kinds of research on the use of music and, and how um, it impacts the brain and how it impacts the limbic system and the HPA axis and all of those. You know, our response to music and to sound vibration, which you know impacts us at every single level. And so it's it's that beauty as Donna's talking about it, combining. You know this this rich legacy of Oriental medicine with modern science, with with mm-hmm. depth psychology, with music, and bringing it all together. I mean, I think what we see so often is, you know, this is my discipline, this is your discipline, and what we try to do is create a new kind of ecology which looks at and blends from the very best traditions and support it with research. I mean, we we test things before we bring them out into the market. Donna has years of clinical experience that when she was clinical dean of a major acupuncture college and set up 14 community clinics and was able to test protocols for peripheral neuropathy that used the sound, was able to work with trauma victims and and pediatric patients and really had this amazing ground in which she could test her theories with the use of tuning forks on acupuncture points. Yes, and so, you know, it's just like uh, oriental medicine. I mean, we just don't stop with the human being. So we've taken the work to animals, and my, my great joy and love is, is ecology, uh, obviously, and, and farming and agricultural pursuits. So we're using sound in agriculture, everything from germination to pollination to, you know, um, working with um, increased production and, uh, and also with settling down bees and increasing their numbers. So, I mean, we don't stop. We, we, we take it to all sentient beings. You know, it's plants, it's animals, it's, it's the whole natural world, which I think is really um, what drew me into Chinese medicine in the first place. It's the whole cosmology and the beauty of what it, it represented and its relationship with the natural world. So, um, I mean, I, I think that's, that's quite beautiful. There's, um, we've done a show in the past on um, music therapy, and, and um, it's very powerful what, um, you know, music can do for us. And so you are taking it to that next level to bring in the music and then placing it on those specific points with that intention of exactly. making those changes. Um, 
Now, I you have um I know you have a program in place where people can learn about how to do the acutonics. How does that work? I mean, obviously, if you're not using needles, um, does it necessarily have to be a doctor of Chinese medicine or acupuncturist that's going through the program? I think that's really the beauty of our program is that we train healthcare practitioners from many diverse backgrounds, from physical therapy to, of course, acupuncture, massage, and body work. We've trained nurses, we've trained physicians, um, you know, and, and really our, we have an in-depth certification program. It's about 400 hours, and people learn um, many layers in terms of how, you know, so people who come to us who don't have a background in oriental medicine will learn basic points. We don't try to replace acupuncture school by any means, but we're teaching really important points that we know have big impact, the, the big guns, we call them, and we work a lot with the eight extraordinary meridians. So someone who's coming into our program is going to learn about basic points. They're going to learn how to use the tools. They're going to learn what they represent from a, a physiological and a psychological perspective, and they're going to learn about the, the musical relationships between the tools that we work with. And, and in the more advanced levels, um, we're going, when we get in past level, I think four, which you took, would be are things like harmonic pathology. How do we start to look at the illnesses of our times that we don't even have any more language for? Things like prions, things like, you know, um, different vectors, um, animal-human transmissions, etc. But how do we look at things like autoimmunities and how can we give people the tools? So we'll look at harmonic pathology. How do we have a, not an antidote, but how do we help the body understand, um, you know, where it is and, and where it needs to go? We just assist it. It has its own wisdom and, and knowledge. And, you know, we are working with these cosmic cycles and with frequencies and intervals that fall between the cracks of you know, in a, on a piano. And so these are the things that create the seeds. You know, we always say we, you know, we're, the, the medicine is in a way, uh, the medicine of the parentheses. And, you know, it's, it's the, the seeds of the future are sown in times of, um, the in-between times and the in-between spaces. So that's um, where we're at. And for people that don't have a deep understanding of oriental medicine, I mean, body workers have a lot, and energy workers have so much intelligence and so much wisdom to share with others. So they, of course, get indoctrinated into Chinese medicine, but they also have to do things like take take extra courses, like points and meridians, like five element theory, like um, you know, so that they don't get lost and they're able to work and have a new framework. Um, and then there, of course, is is self care, which I think we mentioned earlier. We have specific sets of tools where we do have guides that help people to do some some different, you know, to do some self-care, but Ellen's going to speak on the self-care because... I, you know. I just want to add something. I mean, one of the things about our curriculum is that Donna and I have trained, we have certified practitioners. We have a course of, of study that leads to um, becoming a certified acutonics practitioner, but we have also have a teacher certification program. So we have trained people who teach our curriculum all over the world. And we have teachers. We have teachers in Canada. We have teachers throughout the U.S. and throughout the world. And we have a so very many, large yeah, global England community of teachers and Israel. practitioners. So, so Australia, um, if, Israel, um, Brazil. Australia. Um, if if somebody is interested in getting in touch with you to find a practitioner near or to look into your program, um, how can they do that? So. Uh, our website is acutonics, A-C-U-T-O-N-I-C-S dot com. We have a Facebook page, an open Facebook page, which is Acutonics Healing. And they can always um, email us at um, either Ellen or Donna at acutonics.com. 
That's great. And you have um, a couple books on acutonics. Can you just give yes, us the names have, of those? We have, we have several books. We have Acutonics from Galaxies to Cells, which is um, our newest book. And our first text was Acutonics is No Place Like Ohm. We also have a book Bone on... healing, oriental, oriental medicine, and the cosmic <laughs> mysteries. Right, and then we also have a book on acutonics for dogs and cats. Oh, that's great. As well great. as poetry books. Yeah, Don is <laughs> My... a poet, so we plug Donna's poetry collections okay. as well. And you can find all of our books on our website, again, at acutonics.com. You can find information about our certification program, our teachers, our teacher bios, where classes are happening. And if you don't see it, then please be in touch with us by email or call us at 575 575- Five eight seven two six eight nine, and there's someone in the office Monday through Thursday. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us today. Um, it was very informative. Thank you. Thank you so great, much. Great, and hope to see you back for some of the advanced classes. <laughs> Definitely. It's on my list. Um, so we were talking today with Jonna Carey and with Ellen Franklin, um, who are the co-founders of Acutonics, which is using tuning forks on acupuncture points, to put it simply. So if you have any questions about today's show, you can email me at anantacalgary at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening and make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio.